it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Um, today I thought I would go through, uh, or start going through, the various ink pads that we've got. Um, I had a really good um, response to the video I did recently about how to set up uh, one of our classic stamping pads. So I thought I would continue in that kind of vein um, around giving some information around each of the stamp pads that we offer. I'm going to use the same stamp set in all of these videos. I will spread the videos out over the next few weeks, uh, so do keep coming back to see those. Uh, I'm going to use the Illuminated Christmas stamp set. It's a red rubber stamp set. I have it in clear mount, which means I use clear acrylic blocks to mount the stamps. I don't use the stickers that go on the back. It does show you how to mount the stickers if you want. Personally, I don't use them. Uh, it's personal choice, really, but I find that I get on perfectly well without them. So, yeah, it's a personal choice. So, this is our classic stamping pad. It's a water-based dye ink. We used to have a slightly different um, design which was this, which you had to push on these three dots um, and then open it and slide it. They look as if these are slightly larger, but actually the stamp pad area is the same in both. The new ones you can stack, uh, the old ones not so much. Um, so the new ones do take up a little less space. They're a lovely clean white finish, but they are basically the same um, the same thing. There is a defoamer in the new ink pads. This was more of an issue with the paler colours, but there is a defoamer, so you shouldn't get any bubbling, particularly when you've got a very new or a recently re-inked ink pad. They could sometimes, uh, if you were stamping a solid image, they could look bubbly, and the new stamp pads have this defoamer, which should stop that. The only reason that the design was changed was because this, the mould for this old style was running out. It was just coming to the end of its life. So rather than make a brand new mould for this style, it seemed like a perfect time to see whether there was a better style. And this is what they came up with. I like the new ink pads. There are some um, concerns that some people have with how they slide. This one slides perfectly easily, but if you do have a problem with them sliding, A, I don't slide them all the way to the end because I find you've then got something to grab hold of at this end, although having said that, still got ink on me. Um, but I do find that that is just easier anyway. But also, if you do find that they're a bit stiff, you can rub just an ordinary household candle down the sides here or get a cotton bud with a very small amount of Vaseline and rub that down the sides. And that just helps lubricate them a little bit whilst you're wearing them in. They will ease off. The more you use them, the easier they become. But yeah. So as far as the ink is concerned, as I say, it's a water-based dye ink. Um, if you've set up your ink pad, as I showed you, uh, you won't have your sticky labels on the back now. Uh, so you will be able to see it's water-based dye, acid-free, non-toxic. Perfect, therefore, for scrapbooking, um, because you're not going to have any, any problems with um, archival issues. So, brilliant for that. So, here's our, our stamp. I have got three different sorts of uh, paper that I'm going to stamp on. I may not use all of these papers for all of the inks, because some of them are going to be less appropriate than for others. But the basic idea is you just tap your stamp, and it is a tap. It's a gentle tap, not a push. You just tap your stamp on your ink pad. I generally say to my students um, to tap three times, so one, two, three, and then just, actually let's do it this side, you can just go straight down onto your cardstock, hold for a count of three and come up. I say hold for a count of three because it gives the ink time to actually transfer. So there we go, um, a nice clean image. Now. You can do things with that. So if you've got a blender pen, you can take your blender pen and you can move the ink around a bit whilst it's still a bit damp. Um, 
so when it hasn't set too hard. And this is ordinary Whisper White cardstock. What I would say is that you don't want to go in too hard with your blender pen because you will end up with the card pilling. What do I mean by pilling? Let me show you. Here we go. That's pilled nicely. So let's see if you can see that. If I do a bit of that, you should be able to see that we've got this um, card coming off. Basically, you're making the card moist. It is only, you know, glorified paper. Paper is from trees, you know, it's pulp. It had water when it was made. So because of the way that this card is made, it will want to revert back to being pulp if you put water on it. So that's not a great idea. However, let me grab, let's see, let's take this, which is, what's this, light, light soft sea foam. So this is an alcohol marker. The classic ink is not ideal for alcohol markers, but it will work. It will bleed out a little bit if the dye, if the ink isn't completely dry, but you can see it won't really move. Um, so from that point of view, it's fine. Um, so that's not a problem. Um, you can use a water pen, a water brush. It's not ideal because again, you're going to overload your water, your um, paper. But what you can do with your classic ink is having stamped your image, you can take your water pen or aqua painter and use your ink as a paint. I've got a bit too much water on my on my water brush but you get the idea. You can also use the same idea, you can take your blender pen and pick up and use your blender pen straight from the straight from the lid of your um, your pad. I would always say clean your blender pen off when you've finished. So that's on Ordinary Whisper White. You can also stamp on Shimmer White. So this is Shimmery White. I mean, obviously you can stamp on any of the Ordinary um, cardstocks as well. Let me find, can I find some blueberry bushel? Apparently not. Um, okay, let me find some blueberry bushel. And um, whilst we're waiting for there we go, tone on tone. So whilst we're waiting for that just to sort of set, although having said that, we can take our, our blender pen, just make sure it is clean, and again, we can blend it. You will notice that it doesn't move quite as much as on the ordinary Whisper White card, but you can get it to move a bit. And of course, you can just pick it up and apply it that way. Now, the thing with the shimmery white is you can get into it a bit more. It doesn't pill as quickly. It will pill eventually. It's just going now, but not as quickly. And you can use a bit of water. So with your aqua marker, you can come in and it will take a bit of water. It's not watercolor paper. However, we will come on to that. So next we will stamp on stamp tone on tone, so blueberry bushel onto blueberry bushel. And you get you know tone on tone. So and again you can come in and you can use your stamp and write marker, or I mean your um aqua painter and colour that in. And again, you don't want to go mad because you will end up with it pilling. Uh, it probably pills more with the blender pen because you're, you're kind of rubbing it more. So again, if we go in with our blender pen, it's not as bad as the Whisper White, but it is beginning to break down the fibres. So you don't really want to do that too much. And of course, you then need to make sure it's clean on something that isn't the same colour. So that's that. Right. Watercolour paper with the same ink. Watercolour paper is textured. So uh, if you're worried about getting a clean image, your Stamparatus is your friend. 
uh, because that means you can re-ink every time and you know you can it re you can ink it up stamp it and if it's not properly stamped you can have another go um, but I would say hold it on longer uh, just so that it can get into that um, texture and again you can come in with your blender pen and move your ink around because it's watercolour paper it's going to peel less obviously or you know it's beginning to go as much as anything because I'm putting um, what's the word I'm looking for friction that's the word but you can come in with your aqua painter and pick up some ink and apply it that way and of course with your aqua painter you can then come in and go all the way over and add lots of water and your water paper your watercolor paper won't mind because that's what it's for so that's kind of your classic ink. Um, if you've got a very, very juicy ink pad, you might, if you're very, very quick, be able to heat emboss. Uh, let me find some clear embossing powder and see if I can get it to do that. It's unlikely, but we'll give it a go. Let me get this loaded up. Uh, this is a relatively new ink pad, after all it is the new ink colours. So let me see what I can do. I think it is going to be highly unlikely, but, oh no, no, I've managed to do it, but you do have to be that quick. So that has taken some embossing powder. So let us get our heat tool and our trusty cheese board one trusty cheese board and just see what that looks like with clear embossing powder on it. Um, the Smooth Whisper White has got a good surface to keep the paint, the paint, the ink um, wet for a little longer. But let's have a look. we go we have our nice glossy finish but that's only going to happen with a nice juicy ink pad um, so do bear that in mind and you have to be that quick so don't hang about anyway I hope you found that useful as I say this is the classic ink pad from Stamping Up um, if you have any more questions about classic ink please do leave a comment or drop me an email my email address is on my blog. Um, on my blog, you'll find all my social media links. There's also, there's a section that's about me and you'll find my address there. If you're on my mailing list, my address is on my mailing list as well. So, you know, you can always drop me a line if you would rather go to the, you know, old fashioned writing a letter. I know we, we don't write letters very much these days, but sometimes it's quite nice. Um, so there we go. Classic ink. If you uh, keep con clear, if I put my teeth in, um, if you've got any questions, I say let me know. Just drop a comment. If you need any supplies, please do um, pop over to my online store, which is linked immediately below, and also on my blog posts. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, please do. I'm hoping that by the, my birthday on the first of November, I will have five thousand subscribers. That would be a lovely birthday present. The subscribe button is just down in the bottom right hand corner here. You can also subscribe to my blog posts and my newsletter over on my website. Um, so lots of ways to keep in touch with Old Staples Crafts. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again soon.